All right, good afternoon. Uh, I will start off with a um, statement on the Board of Inquiry for Northwest Syria. As announced on the 1st of August, the Secretary General has established an internal United Nations Headquarters Board of Inquiry to investigate a series of incidents that have occurred in the Northwest Syria since the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding of Stabilization in the Idlib de-escalation area between Russia, the Russian Federation and the Republic of Turkey on September 17, 2018. The board will be led by Lieutenant General Obiakor of Nigeria, and it will also include as other members Ms. Janet Lim of Singapore and Ms. Maria Santos Paish of Portugal. The board will review and investigate a number of specific incidents in which there was destruction of or damage to facilities of the UN, to, excuse me, on the UN deconfliction list and on UN supported facilities in the area. The work of the board will be supported by two senior experts, Major General Fernando Ordonez of Peru and Mr. Pierre Ritter, the former, in, uh, former International Committee of the Red Cross head of regional delegation, and he is from Switzerland. The board will commence its work on September 30th. It will ascertain the facts of the specific incidents concerned and report to the Secretary General once it completes its work. The Secretary General urges all parties concerned to extend their full cooperation with the board. And the Secretary General, as you know, is on his way to, the bah to Nassau in the Bahamas. He is expected to meet with Prime Minister Hubert Minnis this afternoon. And as he told you yesterday, this is a visit to show the UN solidarity with the government and people of the Bahamas after the onslaught of Hurricane Dorian. While in Nassau, the Secretary General will visit a shelter of hurricane evacuees, as well as the operations center for the National Emergency Management uh, Agency. And tomorrow, he's expected to visit the areas hit uh, by Hurricane Dorian on Abaco Island. The Deputy Secretary General Mina Mohammed is in Rome in Italy today to participate in the joint meeting of the governing bodies of Rome-based UN agencies. She told the officials of the World Food Program, the Food and Agriculture Organization, and the International Fund for Agricultural Development that they have shown continued unity throughout the year to advance the reforms and have played the pivotal role in ensuring timely cost-sharing contributions by the entities of the UN development system. She had said she's provided their respective entities with the mandates they needed to seize this historic opportunity for transformation. Ms. Mohammed said that at uh, the meeting on the Sahel that it is our collective responsibility as an international community to support the governments of the Sahel as they strive to address, not, uh, address the root causes of the crisis and create a path towards peace and prosperity. And this morning, the Secretary General's Chef de Cabinet, Maria Luisa Ribieri Viotti, spoke at the General Assembly's high level forum on the culture of peace. On the and she spoke on the Secretary General's behalf. She said that peace is at the heart of the UN Charter and all that we do, stressing the, co the concept of a culture of peace is grounded in understanding that peace is fragile and it is, its pursuit must be a constant process. Ms. Viotti said a culture of peace is also inseparable from human rights, respect for diversity, and fairer societies. As societies become more multicultural, multi-ethnic, and multi-religious, we need to invest in more social cohesion, recognition that diversity is a richness and not a threat. Her remarks have been shared with you. And turning to the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Leila Zarugi, the special representative of the Secretary General and head of the mission there, met today with the U.S. Secretary of uh, Health and Human Services, Alex Azar, to discuss the fight against Ebola as well as other health emergencies. She reiterated the importance of, support, of supporting in the Ebola response while addressing other diseases affecting too many people in the country, such as measles, cholera, and malaria. She added that improving basic health services for the population has also to be a priority. The UN mission also confirmed that the body of peacekeepers from the, uh, excuse me, confirmed that the body of the peacekeeper from the Indian contingent who had deployed in Goma, who drowned in Lake Kivu and had been missing since Sunday, has now been found. Ms. Zerugi offered her condolences to the families and friends of the peacekeeper, as well as to the people and government of Ghana. 
excuse me, the people and government of India. And finally, further south in the province of Tanganyika, UN peacekeepers supported uh, rescue operations following the derailment of a train yesterday in Yemba. The peacekeepers provided first aid in the wounded and helped evacuate them to local hospital. And turning to Mali, today 3.9 million Malians need humanitarian assistance, or one in five people in the country. This is an increase of 22 percent compared to the beginning of the year. The number of internally displaced people has also doubled to reach close to 170,000 people by the, as, the end of, as of the end of July. The surge in intercommunal violence has, as one can imagine, exasperated, exasperated the humanitarian crisis. As of today, over a million people are severely food insecure. The revised humanitarian response plan seeks 219, uh, for 2019 seeks, seeks 324 million, but it is only 30 percent funded. Uh, yesterday afternoon, as you saw, the Secretary General met with the Vice, with Vice President Felix Uloa of El Salvador in response to a request for the UN support from the government of El Salvador to establish an international mechanism to fight impunity and corruption. The Secretary General has agreed as a first step to deploy an interdisciplinary technical assessment mission to El Salvador in the coming days. From Geneva, the World Food Program colleagues tell us that the, that the agency has launched its biggest emergency response for Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh so far this year, following the weeks of heavy rain and flooding. In 24 hours, WFP reached 16,000 people with food aid. That's more than the total number of people WFP reached since the start of the monsoon season. And UNESCO uh, warned today that without urgent actions, 12 million children will never set foot in a school. As of last year, one in six school-age children, or roughly 258 million, were out of school, making it difficult to ensure inclusive equality for education for all. More, more information online. Yesterday, you saw that we announced the appointment of Lieutenant General Guha of India as the chair of the Redeployment Coordination Committee and head of the UN mission in support of the Hodeida agreement, uh, agreements. And as you know, he succeeds General Lolas Guard, uh, who served as head of the mission until 31 July. A uh, couple of things to tell you as well. One, um, I have some numbers for you as you prepare your General Assembly reporting. Uh, just as of today, the Secretary General is expected to have about 140 bilateral meetings and participate in 52 separate events. We will be putting out a uh, week ahead uh, that will be updated daily uh, as soon as we can, and those numbers are scheduled uh, to change, are expected to change, obviously, as we get closer to the date. As of Wednesday this week, 196 individuals are scheduled to speak at uh, the GA, according to our, DJAC, um, our colleagues from General Assembly, 97 heads of states, five vice presidents, 46 heads of government, five deputy prime ministers, 38 ministers, two chairs of delegations, and three observers. A total of 560 official meetings have so far been requested. This does not begin to include bilateral meetings between representatives of member states. We don't have that number yet, but just as for information, in 2018, 1,676 bilateral meetings were confirmed and serviced by the UN here on the premises. At the end of the day, while we should hope to accommodate as many meetings as there are requests, but we do have a space uh, factor, obviously, and uh, we congratulate and wish good luck to our friends in General Assembly and Conference Services who have to handle all the requests and all the meetings. Um, in a short while, I will be joined by Miguel Angel Moratinos, the High Representative for the UN Alliance of Civilizations. He will talk to you a bit more about the UN Plan of Action to Safeguard Religious Sites. Uh, which was launched yesterday, and after that, we will be. Uh, you'll hear from Monica, and this is expected to be her last briefing as spokeswoman for the president of the General Assembly. We want to congratulate you on a great year, a stellar year, and all the work you've done. We've enjoyed working with you. Um, and uh, lastly, we thank our friends in Ghana, who've paid their budget dues in full today, bringing us up to one hundred twenty. Should I ask a question myself? Uh, <laughs> James. 
Go ahead, James. Uh, okay. Um, I want to follow up, please, on the announcement of the Board of Inquiry, mm -hmm. uh, which has finally, the details have finally been announced some six weeks after the SG first said he was going to set it up. As you know, some of these instances in Idlib probably amount to war crimes. This is an internal Board of Inquiry. You say the Board will, re will report to the Secretary General. Can you pledge to us that the full report in the interest of full transparency, will be made public? Board of inquiries, uh, and they routinely happen, are uh, internal documents uh, and not for public release. That's what I can tell you at this, um, at this point. It's also important to know that board of inquiries are not uh, judicial bodies. They're not uh, criminal investigations. They make no legal findings and do not consider questions of legal uh, liability or legal responsibility. Their job is to uh, ascertain, uh, ascertain the facts. And it helps, um, it, it's also important for us in terms of improving the efficacy or suitability of our own policies, procedures, and protocol. Isn't it important that the full facts, given these are life and death situations, are made public? We can, I, completely agree with you that these are life and death situation. This is what I can tell you at this point. Edie and then Evelyn. Uh, another follow-up on the Board of Inquiry. Um, is the Board of Inquiry going to uh, visit Idlib? Is that a possibility or is all of this going to be done from outside of Syria? No, the, the Board of Inquiry will uh, will organize its its work. Uh, the parties uh, concern, including Syria, the Russia, and Turkey, have all been informed uh, that the Board of Inquiry will commence its work. They will engage uh, with those uh, governments and other member states in due course. And as, as we said, we, and as the Secretary General himself said, he encourages uh, all states to cooperate uh, with the Board of Inquiry, and they will, you know, they will decide how to work, and that will obviously that will include, that may include uh, travel to uh, to the area, and we very much hope that they have access uh, to the sites of the incidents. Has has the Secretary General received any response from Syria, Russia, or Turkey? No, we've we've informed them. Uh, it's it's not as if we were waiting for a response. This is within the Secretary General's authority to establish this board, um, and uh, we will move forward. Evelyn, then Michelle. Right. I want to tell you this is the first press conference for the Dag Hammarskjöld Fellows for this year. They're in Great. the second row from Great. Egypt, Welcome. from Trinidad, from. Uh, Zimbabwe and Nigeria. Great. Welcome. And then, uh, will you keep us informed on when we could get the first release from the Board of Inquiry? Yes. The first yeah. document. We'll Michelle. Just to follow up to James's question again on the Board of Inquiry, you mentioned that it won't establish legal responsibility, but will the report um, point the finger of blame as to who's responsible the board, for the, certain the attacks. The goal of the board is to establish the facts for the Secretary General. So it won't say who's responsible the, at it all? Is, it is. The, the goal of the board is to establish the facts for the Secretary General. That's not what I said. Um, Masood. Thank you, Stefan. Um, the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Imran Khan, has been begging and pleading on India to start talks. But, of course, it's not going anywhere. And the Secretary General has been calling upon two sides, and that's not going anywhere. It, what is it that the Secretary General can do to somehow force these two countries to meet, at least on the sidelines over here, if it's not going to happen? Because India no, I, I is mean, absolutely uh, adamant Masood, Masood, the, the, you've raised this question many times, uh, and it's a very legitimate and it's a very important uh, issue to raise. I think we have stated over and over again the Secretary General's position and what he has done to date. And if there's anything new, I will share it with you. Uh, Joe and then Abdul Hamid. But, uh, but what I'm saying is the Secretary General's position is clear, but the thing is. No, no I, I, I know what you're saying, and I, I've, I think I've, I've answered it to the best of my ability. Joe. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, and maybe I missed it, but uh, has there been or will there be a readout of the Secretary General's uh, 
meeting with Ambassador Kraft. I, I know she uh, presented her credentials, but was there any substantive discussions at all, all right. on issues? Uh, you know, they had a, a, fir a very good first initial uh, meeting. They had lunch together. And I think the Secretary General uh, very much enjoyed the meeting and is looking forward to uh, working with the permanent representative. And I think he's very happy that she's here before the General Assembly uh, gets gets underway. And um, you can't you can't enumerate any of the issues, substantive issues. There's a long list of. I mean, yeah, th this was an initial contact. Okay. So let's. And, uh, and on the Syria Board of Inquiry, um, not to belabor the point, but. Um, you said it will not be made public, but to what extent will it be shared with the member states? I said, th this is what I said, I said, and this is what I can say at this point, that uh, as with all United Nations Board of Inquiry, the board's report will be an internal document, uh, not for public uh, release. Well, that's another, uh, but when you say internal, internal to what? Just within the secretariat, it's, shared with I, the member that's states? What I can that's what I can tell you at this time. Abdul Hamid. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, the SG issued a statement regarding Netanyahu's pledge to annex the Jordan Valley and some uh, parts of the settlement, and he expressed concern. Could you give me a, a definition of the word concern? What does it mean? Wh where does it take the position of the United Nations, the moral position of the United Nations, when he expressed concern? Concern goes back to him, not to the incident. That's one question. Well, uh, listen, I... I don't know about you, I'm not a nat native English speaker. I, you, the, general, the general definition of concern is that he's concerned about a statement made or concerned by a decision made by someone or concerned that something happened. It's not a positive, it's not a positive word as far but it as goes back this to French him. speaker. He did, is not deploring, he's not condemning. I, I think, he's listen, I, I'm, I'm happy to have a, a, a long debate with you about uh, the, the use of words. Um, when we use the term concern in our statements, it is not a positive word. Okay. Yes. Can I have a second question? Sure. Sorry. I okay. had a too Sorry. much caffeine this morning. Bassam uh, Sayah, a Palestinian prisoner, 47 years old. He died in jail after four years, and he, he had some medical complications and human rights groups accuse Israel of uh, medical negligence that he passed away. So is there any, uh, did you take note of that? Did I, you, I, I, have, I have personally not seen that report. I will check with our colleagues on the ground. Yes, sir. Thank you, Stefan. As part of the latest prisoner exchange between Ukraine and Russia, there was one person who was handed to Russia and who was seemingly an ultimatum from Russia to hand back. Uh, his name is Vladimir Tsemakh, uh, and uh, his significance is that he is probably a witness to MH17 <laughs> crime. And now the Dutch prosecutors even uh, requalify re him as a, as a suspect. So uh, given that Russia voted for the UN Security Council resolution just days after the tragedy, pledging for the full investigation, do you think that this ultimatum to hand back such an important witness goes in accordance with that? I, I'm not going to interpret the resolution. I do know there are a number of investigations going on around the, the tragedy of uh, MH17, and we, we hope that all member states cooperate with those. Madam, and then uh, go ahead. Thank you, Stefan. Um, I was just wondering if we can get an update on the uh, SG's statement about the Amazon fires and in relation to that with Ambassador Kraft, he met with her yesterday, mm -hmm. but has he had, um, does he have any expectations or does he look forward to her joining in on the climate summit? Uh, we're, I'm waiting to get an update of who will represent the U.S. at the climate summit. I think as the special envoy told you, the U.S. will be uh, represented. He looks forward to engaging with her on every topic in front of the U.N. from A to Z. Yes, Sin. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, do you have an update for Kashmir, what's going on over there right now? No, I do not. I think I, your colleague, Masuji, tried to ask me that same question. I have no more creative words on that, that beyond what I've already stated. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, staff. Uh, a quick observation. I was in Washington, D.C. on Monday. They had the National Defense University, the Africa Center. They had a seminar on the situation, security situation in the Africa Sahel. And there were various ambassadors from the West African countries. And they specifically expressed frustration with MINUSMA, pointing out that it's six years 
six billion dollars spent and the situation is still volatile and unstable. What would be the Secretary General's reaction to some of their concerns uh, I about think, this? I think we're all concerned, uh, if you'll excuse the use of that word. Um, we're all concerned about the situation in, in the Sahel. Uh, what I can tell you is that our colleagues, peacekeepers in MINUSMA are doing an incredible job at a very high personal risk. Uh, I think that mission, if I'm, not, if I'm not wrong, has seen the highest numbers of fatalities. Um, the role of, of, of the UN is to try to, peacekeepers is trying to create some safe space within, uh, within Mali. But all the signatories uh, to, the, to the agreements that were agreed to in Mali have a responsibility. The political leaders have a responsibility uh, from all, the, 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 all of the Malian uh, society. The United Nations will continue to support, uh, to support Mali in their efforts. There is a broader challenge in the Sahel. The Secretary General has expressed his, uh, I think, his frustration at the lack of predictable funding to the G5 uh, Sahel uh, force. Um, there is a lot to work to do, but I, I feel, you know, pointing the finger at uh, our colleagues in, uh, in MINUSMA, I think, is frankly a bit unfair given uh, the heroic work uh, that they do on very limited uh, limited resources that they have facing uh, very hardened uh, terrorist groups who are hell bent on creating terror. Madame. Sorry, can I get that update on the Amazon fires and can you give an update? I have on no, not, no update to share with for you now. On how Amazon about fire. on Venezuela and Colombia? No, nothing more than what I've already said. Masoud, then we'll go to our guest and then we'll thank you. Monica. Uh, thank you. Sipan, on this. Um, uh, concern that you have expressed, and I'm not going to go into subtleties of the language of English language, but the thing is, Israel has known whenever it has said something, it has done it, gone through with it, with the support of the American government. So what is it that the international community can do to avoid another sort of a confrontation? I, the, the, I, I don't speak for the international community. I speak for Secretary General. Uh, he, through himself and through his envoy, have engaged and will continue to engage uh, with the parties to try to move the process forward. We've expressed our frustration. Read Nikolai Mladenov's last statement to the council. What Let's, happened? To can you endure another question? I, it's a good question, but yes, I can endure one more question, and then we'll go to Mr. Martinos. Thank you. Put us in a better mood. Yeah. As we speak, there are 5,700 Palestinians in jail, 230 children, mm -hmm. 48 women, and 500 detainees. Mm -hmm. Why these numbers do not show in the uh, monthly briefing of Mr. Mladenov? I, I think there, first of all, I think Mr. Mladenov has on periods referred to them. And second, there are the parts of the UN mechanism, including the human rights mechanism, that report on these things regularly. Senor Moratinos. 